Hello friends, this video on life processes part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now, the food was there in the small, uh, the, in the stomach. In the stomach, the food was acted upon by hydrochloric acid. So the medium became acidic here. So in stomach, what all happened? In stomach, the food was uh, acted upon by the gastric enzymes in present of acidic medium due to hydrochloric acid. So now from the stomach, the food will come and it will enter into the small intestine. So the small intestine starts from here. So what happens in the small intestine? So food reaches from stomach to small intestine through sphincter muscle. So here you have a sphincter muscle which will actually allow the food after all digestion of the food is done in stomach then it is sent to the small intestine so this sphincter muscle will allow it to enter into the small intestine so what is small intestine in this this small intestine is a very much coiled tube like structure so the small intestine is divided into three parts what are the three parts duodenum jejunum and ileum. So these are the three parts into which the small intestine is divided. So duodenum is this part. This is duodenum that is the upper part of the small intestine. Then the next part is jejunum which is this part. So this is jejunum and the lowermost part is the ileum. So what is jejunum? Jejunum is that portion where the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct opens here. So it is U-shaped. If you see, this is duodenum, that is the uppermost part of the small intestine. So this is the place where the bile duct and the pancreatic duct opens. Now what is bile duct and what is pancreatic duct? In the previous slide, I told you that liver secretes bile juice. Bile juice is stored here in the gallbladder. So we want this bile juice for digestion. We also know that here we have pancreas and this pancreas also secretes pancreatic juice which contains all the enzymes which will actually do the digestion. So we want to do those enzymes also. So this bile juice is carried from the gallbladder to the duodenum with the help of this duct. You can see a blue colored structure, a tube like structure. This tube is known as the bile duct. So this bile duct will carry the bile juice for, from gallbladder to the duodenum. So you see this is connected to the duodenum. And also you can see here that in the pancreas you can see a dark green thin structure, rod like structure. So that is nothing but the pancreatic duct. So this pancreatic duct will carry all the pancreatic enzymes and it will take it to the duodenum. So duodenum is the place where the bile juice reaches, the pancreatic enzymes also reaches and the food also reaches from the stomach. Right? So that is duodenum. The next part is jejunum. So what is jejunum? Jejunum is again a, a coiled structure but it is narrower than duodenum. So duodenum is the widest part of the small intestine. Jejunum becomes narrower and ileum is even more narrow. Correct? So what happens in small intestine? Digestion happens here. That is very obvious because you see all the things which are needed for digestion is present here. So we have the pancreatic enzymes along with the bile juice which help in digestion. Now you see what happens. Now the food which is coming from the stomach, that food is acidic in nature. Because in stomach there was a lot of hydrochloric acid. So the food has turned acidic. So now when that acidic food reaches the duodenum, what happens? The bile juice which is present in the duodenum will make that acidic food alkaline. Now once the medium becomes alkaline, the pancreatic enzymes will be able to act on the food. Now the pancreatic enzymes have got trypsin, it has got um, the pancreatic amylase and it also has pancreatic lipase. So the digestion of proteins, carbohydrates as well as fat will take place. On top of that, there are some intestinal glands also which secrete enzymes to digest carbohydrates, proteins and fats. On top of the pancreatic enzymes, we also have intestinal glands which will secrete enzymes. So for these intestinal glands also, they want that the medium should be alkaline and that medium is made alkaline by bile juice. Right? So that means all type of digestion will take place where? in the duodenum. So that means all kind of digestion 
will happen in duodenum because duodenum is the place where we have bile juice, where we have the pancreatic enzymes, where we have the intestinal enzymes as well. So in duodenum we will have all digestion taking place. Okay, so now if the digestion is taking place in the duodenum, then what is the purpose of jejunum and ileum? What are they going to do? Now, in jejunum and ileum, mostly absorption happens here. So, jejunum and ileum. So, here, mostly absorption will happen. So, digestion is over. So, where which are the organs where digestion actually took place? Little bit of digestion happened in the buccal cavity. Then, a lot of digestion happened in the stomach and a severe amount of digestion happened in the duodenum of small intestine. Now this jejunum and ileum will help in absorption of food. How does it help in that? So this villi on the inter inner intestine, in intestinal walls ensure absorption. What is villi? Villi are thin finger like projections like how we have cilia outside the body of paramecium. Similarly villi are thin finger like projections. So what does this villi actually do? Since they are very thin, so the surface area is increased for better absorption. Right? So when you have very thin projection, thin hair like structure, so the surface area increases and therefore the absorption is more. So what happens here, blood vessels carry the nutrients to each and every cell. So they will absorb more and more uh, nutrients from the food, from the from the food which has been digested so far. So from that food, all good things are absorbed by this villi which are present on the inner intestinal walls. That means on the in inside walls of this intestine, we'll have villi. So they will absorb all the good things, all the nutrients from the food. Right now, villi are richly supplied with blood vessels, so that is going to help because villi is going to absorb all the good things from the food. Now, since villi are attached with the blood vessels, so all those good things will be transferred to the blood vessels. And what will that blood vessel do? That blood vessel will pass those good things to the entire body because blood is flowing through the entire body, right? And then again, we see another thing that the epithelial lining is thin. We have already studied about the epithelial tissue, right? What is epithelial tissue? Which forms the outer covering. So they form the skin of all the tissues. So this epithelial lining is thin. So why is it thin? Because this villi, let us suppose if these are the villi, they are attached with blood vessels. So now when villi will absorb the nutrients, it will pass to the blood vessels. So now if, if the epithelial lining of small intestine is very thin then the diffusion of the nutrients will become easier right because if the boundary is thick so the diffusion will become difficult so if it is if the walls are very thin then the transfer of nutrients from the villi to the uh, blood vessels will become easier so these are the reasons or these are some of the things which actually supports or which favors the absorption by jejunum and ileum of small intestine Right? So what did we see in small intestine? We have duodenum, jejunum and ileum. Duodenum helps in digestion wherein digestion takes place with the help of pancreatic enzymes and intestinal enzymes in presence of bile juice which makes the medium alkaline. Clear? Then the remaining two parts of small intestine that is jejunum and ileum they mainly help in absorption of the digested food. How do they absorb? With the help of thin finger like projections called villi. Villi will absorb the good things from the digested food. They will pass it to the blood vessels and the blood vessels will pass it to the entire body. Also the epithelial lining of small intestine is thin so that good transfer can take place with the blood vessels. Another important thing to note here is that the length of small intestine varies from animal to animal depending upon their food habits. So if you have seen here right the small intestine is quite long even though it is a very coiled structure but it is quite long. A good portion of the total length of the alimentary canal which is 9 meters is covered by this small intestine itself. But the length of this intestine again depends upon the food habit of a particular animal. For example 
if we compare a carnivorous animal with a herbivore animal carnivorous animal like uh, tigers they feed on flesh so now meat digestion generally takes lesser time so now since meat digestion takes lesser time therefore the length of the intestine is smaller in case of carnivores whereas in case of herbivores which feed on grasses uh, the, the, or which is mostly consisting of cellulose so digestion of cellulose takes longer time and that is why the length of the small intestine is longer in case of animals which feed on cellulose or plants right so that is how the length of the small intestine varies next we will talk about the large intestine which is the last part of the um, alimentary canal undigested food is passed to the large intestine so so far we saw that the digestion of food was done in stomach and the remaining digestion was done in the duodenum of small intestine absorption was also done in je jejunum and ileum of small intestine so now what is left is the undigested food so what will happen to the undigested food it will be passed to the large intestine so where is large intestine this is large intestine so you, if you see here the undigested food will pass from here small intestine is connected to the large intestine like this so it will pass through the large intestine and it is finally excreted out through anus so this large intestine is wider than the small intestine you can see here in the picture itself the small intestine is very thin the tubes are very thin but here it is wider it is again divided into two parts that is colon and rectum what is colon colon is the inverted u-shaped part of the large intestine so you can see this is an inverted u-shaped part right so this inverted u-shaped part is colon and what is rectum it is the terminal part of animal alimentary canal so terminal part means this part so this portion is rectum right so it is the end part of the alimentary canal it absorbs excess water undigested food excreted through anus so whatever amount of water is present in that undigested food too much of water is absorbed by the rectum and the remaining food is excreted out as solid so that is how the undigested food is passed to the external environment through the large intestine clear so i hope that the entire process of uh, nutrition in case of human beings is now clear to you okay so what process happens here egestion happens here so now if we look at the different steps of holozoic nutrition which we discussed in the beginning what was they first was ingestion so where did ingestion happen mouth the next was digestion so where did digestion happen it happened in stomach and partly in small intestines duodenum next was absorption and assimilation so they they happened in the jejunum and ileum of small intestine and the last one was egestion which happened in the large intestine clear okay so let us have a quick review of whatever we studied so far so what happens here the food enters from here so that is ingestion happens here so the food enters through mouth it goes into the buccal cavity where it is broken down into smaller pieces with the help of teeth it is also acted upon by saliva which makes the food softer and easier to chew and also there is an enzyme called salivary amylase which converts the complex starch into simple sugars then the food reaches the pharynx which is a common point for both food and wind then pharynx will send it to the esophagus so pharynx sends it to the esophagus which is the food pipe this food pipe will take the food to the stomach now in stomach there are gastric glands which will ex which will secrete uh, the enzyme pepsin which helps in the digestion of proteins it will for digestion of proteins or for the action of this enzyme pepsin an acidic medium is needed therefore hydrochloric acid is also secreted now so that too much of hydrochloric acid do not get deposited in the stomach for that purpose mucus is also secreted so now this partly digested food which is now acidic will then reach the small intestine the uppermost part of small intestine is known as duodenum what happens in duodenum digestion again takes place there are some enzymes which comes from this pancreatic duct 
this green colored duct which you see here through this pancreatic duct they reach the duodenum also bile juice from gallbladder reaches with the help of the bile duct the common bile duct which is shown here so they all reach the uh, duodenum so in duodenum digestion takes place because the bile juice makes the medium alkaline therefore the pancreatic enzymes as well as some enzymes which are secreted by the intestinal glands they act on the food and complete digestion of food take place now once the food is digested then there it is passed to the jejunum and ileum part so what happens in these two part absorption of food takes place with the help of small finger like structures called villi so these villi will help in absorption of food and then they will pass the absorbed nutrients to the blood vessels. And then the indigested food will be passed to the large intestine which consists of this u inverted u-shaped structure called, uh, called colon and then it will be excreted to the external environment through the anus. So ingestion happened here at mouth, digestion happens here at stomach and duodenum so here digestion happened absorption happens in ileum and jejunum and ejation happened in the large intestine through anus right so that was the uh, overall process of nutrition in human beings thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.